Lovely time. Whoa. Wonderful weather. Yeah? yeah? You enjoy this sunny weather, no? It's beautiful. I do? Yes. Yeah. Especially right here. Oh, yeah. You know, whoever invented the high hills, they should be awarded Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in this kind of weather, you know? When the water is about <laughs> three, four inches, yeah? And when your high heel is five, okay, you win. Gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You okay, huh? all of you? Yes. They cry like, like babies last time. We don't want to go home. We don't want to go home. I say, I don't want you to go home, but you have to go home. Uh, your family wants you to go home. Your government wants you to go home. Yeah? And your karma wants you to go home. <laughs> Crying to me, what's the use, huh? Whatever we have created, we live in it, right? If you have enough strong power, then you can overcome it, but if not yet, then just have to accept it. You know, right? Yes. Yeah. In this world, because we don't have God uh, connection, so we love this and that and stuff, you know? And once we have God connection, we still love this and that and others. <laughs> <laughs> but we can, you know, have it or not have it, yeah? Mm. Okay. The Vietnamese are here? Yeah. How many Vietnamese raise hand? Last week was all Vietnamese, yeah. <laughs> this week was all Chinese, <laughs> and the week before was European, yes. Oh, Mexican, I don't forget you. The lovely people, they're really lovely. The Mexican are very, very sincere, you know? They're yeah, very sincere. I'm surprised I don't even speak their language. The first time I came to Mexico, I felt their overwhelming affection. Immediately, you know, and every time I go there, it's the same. Yes? And the Costa Rican also. Now, I tell you some story, okay? The story is, say, now that I'm dead. The master, you know? Mm. This is in the book of Sufism. Mm. They talk between master and disciple, huh? Mm. The Master said to some of his disciples, yeah, yes. Now that I'm dead, you may read something of the truth of the Sufi. Had this information been given to you directly or indirectly when I was perceptibly among you, mean when he was still alive, you would all, except for a few, have fed your acquisitiveness and love of wonder alone from it. Probably this is a letter. He wrote before he gone to Nirvana. Huh? This is a Muslim master, okay? Mm. I'm sure he went to Nirvana, yeah? <laughs> and the Buddha went to heaven, yeah? Mm. They exchange places sometimes, you know? <laughs> Why not, huh? <laughs> know then that what the Sufi master is doing for the world and for its people great and small, is often not seen by the observer. Seeing you see, but you do not perceive. <laughs> Hearing you hear, but you do not understand. You got me, yeah? Hmm. A Sufi teacher uses his powers to teach, to heal, to make men happy, and so on. According to the best reasons for using the powers, if he shows you no miracles, this does not mean that he is not doing them. If he declines to benefit you the way you wish, it is not because he cannot. He benefits you in accordance with your merit not in response to a demand by you. He has a higher duty. 
This is what he is fulfilling, the high duty, not your every whim. Yeah? <laughs> All of you look a little bit different than what I saw before. <laughs> yeah, look good anyway. Okay, let's go back to Master here. He continued huh, in the letter. Many among you have had your lives transformed, have been rescued from perils, have been given chances, none of which you have recognized as benefits. But you have had these benefits just the same. Yeah, it's like Master help you invisibly, but you don't know it, right? <laughs> Remember the joke I read to you on Supreme Master Television? There was a guy who was in a hurry for a business appointment, yeah? And he couldn't find a parking place, remember? Yeah. And he kept praying to God, Oh, please, please, I, I'm in a hurry, I don't have time. Please, if you just find me <laughs> a parking place, I will go to the church every day of my life. And then suddenly a parking place is right there. And he said, Oh, never mind, Lord, I found it. <laughs> I found one myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. And there's, there's another story. There was a devout Christian priest, you know, who went into a restaurant. And it's Friday, you know? And you're not supposed to eat meat, supposed to. Yeah, for Christian, most Christian people believe that. Well, at least in Jesus' time, they already have a system, like at least one day a week not to eat meat, you know? And in Buddha time, they already tell people to eat, you know, like, Twice a month, four times a month, vegetarian, or ten days a month. It depends on how much you want to go deep in your devotion for the love of animal and also environment at that time. Already they have, all the master have this system. And that's what it is about not eating meat on Friday. Once a week at least vegetarian. Vegetarianism in Religion The Baha'i Faith, regarding the eating of animal flesh and abstinence therefrom, know thou of a certainty that, in the beginning of creation, God determined the food of every living being, and to eat contrary to that determination is not approved. Selections from the Baha'i Writings of Some Aspects of Health and Healing Buddhism, all meats eaten by living beings are of their own relatives. Lankavatara Sutra Also, after the birth of the baby, Care must be exercised not to kill any animal in order to feed the mother with meaty delicacies and not to assemble many relatives to drink liquor or to eat meat, because at the difficult time of birth there are innumerable evil demons, monsters and goblins who want to consume the smelly blood. By ignorantly and adversely resorting to the killing of animals for consumption, they bring down curses upon themselves which are detrimental to both the mother and the baby. Kasiti Garba Sutra be careful during the days immediately after someone's death, not killing or destroying, or creating evil karma by worshipping or offering sacrifice to demons and deities, because such killing and slaughtering committed, or such worship performed, or such sacrifice offered, would not have even an iota of force to benefit the dead, but would entwine even more sinful karma into previous karma, making it even deeper and more serious. Thus, delay his rebirth to a good state, Karma means retribution. Kasiti Garba Sutra. Gaudai. The most important thing is to stop killing, because animals also have souls and understand like humans. If we kill and eat them, then we owe them a blood debt. Teachings of the Saints. Christianity. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Holy Bible. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Holy Bible. Confucianism. All men have a mind which cannot bear to see the sufferings of others. The superior man, having seen the animals alive, cannot bear to see them die. Having heard their dying cries, he cannot bear to eat their flesh. Mencius. Essenes. I am come to end the sacrifices and feasts of blood. And if ye cease not offering and eating of flesh and blood, the wrath of God shall not cease from you. 
Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Hinduism. Since you cannot bring killed animals back to life, you are responsible for killing them. Therefore, you are going to hell. There is no way for your deliverance. Adelila. He who desires to augment his own flesh by eating the flesh of other creatures lives in misery in whatever species he may take his birth. Mahabharata Anu. Islam. Allah will not give mercy to anyone except those who give mercy to other creatures. Hadith. Do not allow your stomachs to become graveyards of animals. Hadith. Jainism. A true monk should not accept such food and drink as has been specially prepared for him involving the slaughter of living beings. Sutra Katanga. Judaism. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. Holy Bible. Blood meaning flesh. Sikhism. Those mortals who consume marijuana, flesh, and wine, no matter what pilgrimages, fasts, and rituals they follow, they will all go to hell. Guru Granth Sahib. Taoism. Do not go into the mountain to catch birds and nets, nor to the water to poison fishes and minnows. Do not butcher the ox that plows your field. Tract of the Quiet Way. Tibetan Buddhism. The offering to the deities of meat obtained by killing animate beings is like offering a mother the flesh of her own child, and this is a grievous failure, the supreme path of discipleship. Zoroastrianism. Those plants I, Ahura Mazda, or God, rain down upon the earth to bring food to the faithful and fodder to the beneficent cow. Avesta. Everybody knows that vegetarian diet is good for our health and to save the planet. They will be awakening their own great, compassionate, loving self-nature, and then their level of consciousness will rise up automatically and they will understand more than they ever did and they'll be closer to heaven than what they are right now. Okay, now we continue. Many of you, though you are looking for a fuller life, I mean a better life, ne? would have no life at all were it not for the efforts of the community of the friends. He means the fellow practitioners community, yes, because they write special here with capital. Many of you who are poor would be cursed if you were rich. Many of you are still rich because of the presence of a man of wisdom. Many of you who have been at my school think that you have been taught by me. In actuality, you have been physically present in our assemblies while you were being taught in another assembly. <laughs> All these things are so foreign to your customary thoughts that you are not yet in a position to recognize them. My task has been to benefit you. The task of making that benefit perceptible to you is that of others. Your tragedy is that while waiting for me to guarantee miracles and make perceptible changes in you, you have invented miracles which I did not perform <laughs> and have developed a loyalty to me which is of no value at all. And you have imagined changes and help and lessons which have not taken place. The changes, the help, the lessons, however, are there. Now find out what they really are. If you go on thinking and doing what I told you to do and think, you are working with yesterday's materials which have already been used should be discarded. That is the whole letter, okay? Now we're going to operate on it, <laughs> one by one. Okay, the first stanza. 
sometimes it's better to read the whole thing in order to really understand what he's driving at, you know? Otherwise, you just uh, guess it and later say, oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> it wasn't like that. Okay, now we go one by one. Or oh, did you understand everything already, right? It's not that difficult to understand, is it? Yeah? It's just maybe some catch here and there need to be clarified, yeah. Now, now that I'm dead, you may read something of the truth of, of the Sufi. Had this information been given to you directly or indirectly, when I was perceptibly among you, you would all, except for a few, have fed your acquisitiveness and love for wonder alone from it. What he means is, when he was alive, if he told them all this, they probably were just thinking, oh, wow, just perceive it like something new, you know, because he hasn't told them before. So they would just receive it like nosiness, you know. There's not much deep meaning to it. Just like kids, you know, listen to a story, but do not uh, perceive the real deep meaning, you know, as a kid, yeah? Like Jesus tell parables, yeah? There has some meaning behind it, yeah? And some fairy tale has some meaning behind it that the writers or the inventor want to tell you, yeah? Like uh, Beauty and the Beast, for example. It's not about a beautiful girl and a beast. It is about our self and the true self. See what I mean? Yeah. Or maybe some story like uh, frog prince or frog princess. Those things is not truly that you kiss a frog and the frog become a prince. It might be, but mostly it means that as the touch of the enlightened person, you transform. You become your true self again because you have been bewitched. Uh, with the illusionary world, and yourself has not recognized your great self, your true beautiful self, yeah? And you need some real friend to reawaken your memory that you are the prince, that you are heavenly prince. Before he died, he wrote this letter, you know, the whole truth about things, you know, the truth apart from all the politeness and all the delusion of the disciples who were thinking that they understand and who were thinking that they were devoted, <laughs> who were thinking that they are practicing what the Master teaching. Later on we will know. Further down he mentioned it also. So when he told them something, everybody said, oh, ah, yeah, yeah, but they didn't truly understand. And then they will not even practice it. That is the thing. You see? They will not practice what the Master say. Not all of them. So he say, all except for a few, you know, would have just uh, satisfied their own acquisitiveness only, yeah, but not truly understood or not truly appreciate the value of the lesson that he want to deliver. Okay? Now, know then that what the Sufi master is doing for the world and for his people, great and small, is often not seen by the observer. Yes, mostly it's like that, yeah? When Jesus or Prophet Muhammad was alive or Buddha was alive, many things they do just behind the scene. Eh? Most people didn't even see it. Yeah? And if they saw it, just a fraction of it. So the rest, they just made it up. A Sufi teacher uses his powers to teach, to heal, to make men happy, and so on. According to the best reasons for using the powers. If he shows you no miracles, this does not mean that he is not doing them. If he declines to benefit you the way you wish, it is not because he cannot fulfill your wish, that's what he means. He benefits you in accordance with your merit, not in response to a demand by you. He has a higher duty. This is what he's fulfilling. He's fulfilling the higher duty, not your every little whim. Yes, that's what it is because this master must have had it also, <laughs> you know? 
And during his lifetime, he kept telling people, but they didn't listen. They hear differently, and they repeat it differently, and they understood differently. So that's why I say the person who gets initiation has to be in a sound mind. They have to understand the purpose of my teaching and has to want God, you know, want to know your great self. You can't just give anything, you know, a medicine for different people. Hmm? Hmm. If you have a headache, then you take headache medicine. If you, you have stomach aches, you take different medicine. You can't just say, oh, I love him so much, I have headache medicine, and I should also give him, you know, I wish hair, you know, <laughs> such a good one. If I take it, my headache gone away, so he can take it in advance in case he has headaches later on. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. So the Master say here that he does whatever he does according to proper situation and proper handling of the universal law, yeah, and depends on that person's sincerity and merit, yeah? He doesn't do it for show. He doesn't do it on uh, your whim, you know, on your demand, so that uh, it can prove to you that he really has miracle. You see? Yes. So this master must have had it also when he was alive. Many disciples come to him and ask for miracle all the time. We have miracles. We use it. There's no need to ask master. Okay, you can ask. Ask inside. Okay? Pray. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't get it, you? Don't get it. You don't get it. <laughs> very smart. <laughs> very, very smart. Yes. <laughs> This is what he's fulfilling. He's fulfilling a higher duty, yeah, higher purpose in his life, not come here just to please every little desire of yours, according to your lowly understanding even. Some desire not very fitting, yes, and uh, some desire are more noble, yes, and also have to work according to your merit. For example, you meditate a lot and you ask the Master to help you, and then because you meditate a lot, like you've been a good boy, <laughs> you go a little bit higher level where you can receive the Master blessing. Yeah? Mm. Because if you are still in a lower level, the higher blessing even cannot come to you, or you cannot receive. Mm? Like when you're a baby, your mother has to chew the food for you, and not the very rich food. It has to be mild, you know, simple food. Because if they give you immediately such a very concentrated things, and you know, very rich food, cakes and all that, you know, you can't digest. Yeah, coffee, you know, <laughs> you know? Oh, I like coffee, I give you my kid. No, it's not possible yet. So when you grow up, yeah, all this is available to you according to your age as well. And even though you have many, many cars in your garage, you cannot let your baby drive it. <laughs> even the smallest car, no matter how much you love your baby, it's not <laughs> safe for him to drive one of your car. Even though you have many and, uh, you know, he could have even two, three of it. But why? He's not up to it yet. So here the Master explained very well. He must have been a very, very enlightened Master. Check who is this. Uh, Mirza Abdul Hadi Khan of Bokhara. Wow, very enlightened Master. You see, in every tradition, in every age, there are enlightened Masters. Maybe not all enlightened in the same degree, but there are enlightened Masters, yes. And also according to your ability to digest, the lower or the master will come to you. Hmm. The university professor is not of much use to kindergarten or primary school student, is there? Huh? No. Except he is a very exceptional one, huh? some genius. Sometimes it happens, but rare. Okay. But in that case, that student becomes university student. He already understood all that, so he will go to college anyway. You know, there are some genius, you know, very young, but go to college. That is okay too, yeah? It's just like you. Hmm? Maybe you look like everybody else, but your understanding is heightened. 
Your perceptions are illuminated. Yes? Your intelligence are raised up. Yes? Everything about you is different from before initiation. Before, you know, you did not understand what you understand right now. Yes? And before, you see things differently. You see life differently. You perceive everything differently. Of course, you're not completely, you know, enlightened or completely understood everything, but you understand different than before, much better than before. Therefore, you are more tolerant, you're more loving, more enduring even, yeah? More patience, yes. Before, in similar situation, maybe you could not bear it. You, you would even break down, you know? But after initiation, even though you still know it's suffering, it's the same, but you can bear it and you can go on. Could you have some enduring power awakened within you, yes? Somehow, it's different, isn't it? Huh? And you like yourself better now, right? Yes! Good. <laughs> so, uh, conclusion for the second stanza is that we must meditate. No matter what we want, we work for it, yes? So, do not always praise the Master alone or do not always blame the Master alone. We are a team. The so-called master and the so-called disciple. We are friends. We are a corporate. Yes? We must work together. Yeah? Have you ever seen a company where chairman, president, treasurer, secretary, board of trustee, everything alone, one person? And he make anything out of it? No. 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 <laughs> Even <laughs> in the worldly sense, if you form a company, you must have some partner at least, you know, some associate. Okay? Yes. Work or not work together, don't know yet, but must have at least some associate names on it for the, the company's sake, you know? Okay, now you know that. So we are a corporate, yeah? You and the master, whoever that might be. It, it doesn't have to be Master Ching Hai, it could be Master um, Mirza Abdul Hadi Khan, yeah? Or Bokhara. Sounds like a very nice name, though. <laughs> very crispy name. I like those names very much. Yeah, something so very nice, you know. <laughs> Khan, Muhammad, something Khan, Khan, Muhammad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sakamoni Buddha. <laughs> Some languages are very nice, yes, yes. And as I told you, all of you are Supreme Master. Just you haven't got there yet, that's all. Yeah, like professor in the university, you learn well, you're diligent, and then you can become professor. So what is the higher duty that master is fulfilling? What, what is he talking about here? The master say that he's here for a higher duty, not just to please you. Save your souls. Save your souls. Hmm. To awaken you. What else? Huh? La meditación. La meditación, sí, sí. El amor, correcto. Ah? La conciencia. La conciencia. La conciencia. Ah, yes, yes. Elevate our consciousness, yeah? Okay, okay. Save the world. Save the world. Mm. Remember God, that's right, that's right. So the higher duty of a master is not to come here. Okay, he makes you happy and all that, he fulfills your wishes, but that is not the main purpose of him coming to this world. Yeah? The main purpose is? Take you home. Yes, to take you home and to awaken consciousness. Yes, yes. And to elevate people's level of spiritual recognition. Because to please you here and there, it's just the physical things, yeah? Oh, Master, I don't have a car. <laughs> I need a car. <laughs> My neighbor has one, huh? for example. Okay, why not, yeah? If you really need it, if you really earn it, the Master will make it happen, yeah? <laughs> but beware of what you are asking for, yeah? Without car, you probably never had a car accident. But with a car, there is a risk also, hmm? And nowadays, the petrol price is very high. And not only high, we are shortening the petrol quantity in the whole world. For example, like that. 
So maybe the master don't give you a car, he give you a bicycle instead. <laughs> or maybe it's uh, safer for you to have a, a tricycle. <laughs> Remember the joke that I told you a long time ago? There was a, a man who was speeding in the highway and the patrol police stopped him. Eh? And then, then give him a ticket. Eh? And the driver say, oh, what for? I don't need that. So the officer say, never mind, keep it. After you get another three of them, you have a bicycle. <laughs> it's very, very funny, uh, uh, police. I like that very much. I like that very much also, yeah. <laughs> you can't drive no more, you know, four times and then you're gone. <laughs> Hmm. So the master purpose is not what we think it is, yeah? Some people come to a master just because they heard that he heals the sick, you know, cure the blind and make the disabled walk and all that. These are just mundane stuff. It's nice, maybe, you have that, you know? But it doesn't prove anything, yeah? And it doesn't benefit you much if you don't try to seek the source of all miracles yourself. These are just small things. Even if the Master does that, it is according to the level of your practice, yes? So when somebody touched Jesus' garment and she was healed, and she thanked Him, praised Him, He said, Your faith has healed you. Well, such a Master is very humble, yeah? But no doubt, he is aware at all times of his mighty power. Not that he wear it on his sleeve, you know, you know, or write it in front of big web, go green stuff, you know, <laughs> like this. <laughs> but <laughs> the thing is, he is aware of it. He cannot be not aware. Mm. Even though not aware, like, okay, I heal that person, you know, I make that person walk, I cure that blind person. It's not like that, the black and white like that, but he's aware that he is mighty now. He's different. He has access to the store of power of the universe, and he can use it at will. But also in accordance with heavenly will. Yeah? Yes. It's, it's just like a president, eh? His elected president, for example, President elected Obama. Yeah. He's even not in office yet, but he's elected and he knows. He's already slowly getting used to with his power now. Yes? And he knows he's powerful now. President of the most powerful country in the world. You cannot be ignorant of your power. Yes? Even though he's not. Consciously think, oh, always think, I'm powerful, I'm powerful. I can do this, I can do that, I know that. He knows it, but he doesn't know it. Because power is not something you can grab, like you can touch like flower, you know, you can wear it on your finger like a ring, you know. <laughs> but he knows it, yes? And the more he's in presidential office, the more he exercises his power, the more he's aware of what he has. You know, it's nothing black and white, but he knows it. Nevertheless, no matter how powerful he is, he works also according to the national law and international law. He cannot say, oh, I'm the president of the most powerful country, I do what I want. There are limits to what he can do, yes. And even a president has to be more careful about the power that he uses because sometimes it can be trouble, and later regretful. It's too late, for example, like that. Similarly, a spiritual practitioner, even the master, must be aware of the uh, cooperation in the cosmos, you know, and not overdo it. Yes. Mostly the master is aware of that. So that's why he said that uh, the master cannot just be responsible for every whim <laughs> of yours, but has to work according to your merit as well. Mm. So if we 
want more comfortable life, more miracles, more merit, more fulfillment of our desire, even in this world, then we must work for it. Yes, must be uh, diligent in going into our store of merit and take it out to use. Yes, like you have money in the bank, but you're lazy. You sit at home and keep calling the bank teller, bring money to me, bring money to me. She won't bring it. <laughs> if you are very powerful, she will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happened. If you have lots of money in the bank, yes, the manager even come, help you to bring the check to you or bring money to you, and then you sign in your home. That's possible. But that is the position of the master, you see? The master can do anything at will. You know, everything comes to his back and call, but he doesn't abuse it. You see? He doesn't abuse it. Now, we continue. <laughs> Many among you have had your lives transformed, have been rescued from perils, have been given chances, none of which you have recognized as benefits, but you have had these benefits just the same. Yes. Yeah. It's just like the guy who asked for the parking space, you know? <laughs> Never mind, Lord, I have found one myself. <laughs> yes. Just a second ago, there was none, and he prayed and he got it. But never mind, I found it, you see? <laughs> that is a very spiritual joke, you know? Many of the joke I told when you think about it, it applies to your spiritual understanding. You know, if you think about it a little bit, it's not just for ha-ha. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we are like that, you know? Sometimes the Master or God or Angel work for our benefit, but we forget to thank them because we don't see it with our mortal eyes. We think it's us who did this, who did that. Yeah, or it's just chances, or it's just coincidences, you know? Nothing is coincidence in this world, truly, yes. So the Master say here that many of you have your lives transformed, have been rescued from perils, from dangerous situations, yeah, have been given chances, none of which you have recognized as benefits. But nevertheless, you still have it. Yeah, you recognize or not, the benefit has been made for you. Yes, so what the Master mean is that some of you come and ask for miracles and all that stuff and say, the Master don't help me and all that, but the Master helps just the same. Yeah, the Master is not just a body, sit there and respond to you and say, okay, I will do that. I will fix your broken uh, ceiling for you. I will <laughs> stop the car, you know, in the swearing situation for you. Blah, 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 blah. But the Master still does it. Yeah, you know or not know, he still does it. Mm. Now, that is the thing with the human, you know. We human, not only we are blind, deaf, <laughs> we also are not always grateful. Yes, not always like you are very grateful for every little thing and recognize it, which is good for you. Yeah. The Master doesn't need gratification from you, like gratefulness from you or anything, or thank you and all that. My God, so many people, if everybody come thank you, just to listen to all that, you waste all your day already. <laughs> yeah? Yes. So, what he means is whatever you recognize or not recognize, the Master always work for your benefit. If that benefit is good for you, the Master will do it. Yeah. But the human brain doesn't always recognize it. The mind doesn't recognize it. They don't know. Some people say, oh, I've been practicing a long time. I don't see much, you know. But really, this is... Fortunately, rarely the case, yes. The opposite is more often here in our group, yeah? Always comes, oh, Master, thank you for this, thank you for that, which is good for you, yes. No need to thank the Master, you know? They don't need thank you. It's just, as long as you recognize, that means at least your consciousness is elevated to the point that you recognize the subtle working of the universal miracles. Yeah, you feel it. Yeah, or you see it. Even better, you see it. Some are too obvious, you cannot not see, right? <laughs> My last group, the woman say that three times at least, when the car is in danger, you know, and uh, sliding on top of the ice, 
in winter and she cannot break it. The brake just don't work. And she just cried, Master, stop the car, and then the car stopped. <laughs> I said, who is driving? <laughs> the license should be mine. Huh? <laughs> yeah, for example, like that. Then, of course, she knows, you know. Oh, one time, maybe don't know, two times, three times, and have to know. These are too obvious, yes? And we got that plenty among us. Not same, but these obvious miracles we do have. So we say, okay, thank you, Master, and all that. Just because you call the name of the Master. If you didn't call, probably Master would also do it. But then you think, oh... I just stopped the car. Thank you. <laughs> you know? Like a master stop a car and the car stop. Suddenly the brake work and say, never mind, master, I I <laughs> I break the car already. <laughs> Probably, you know, some other words. If, master, if you stop the car, I go good meditation every week. <laughs> I will do some charity for Christmas and all this. And then suddenly the car stops and says, Oh, never mind, the brake works, Master. The brake works already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's just joking. I'm glad that you guys uh, recognize these miracles. Yes? The more grateful you are, the more miracle you will see. It's just like beget like. Mm. And the more you recognize, the working power of the master or the universe, the more you will see of it. Yes, it just you trigger the chain reaction. So the more you recognize it, the more you get. And the more you get, the more you recognize, the more you recognize, the more you get. It triggers this kind of positive responses within yourself or within the universal self. Like you are in the universe. You are one with all things in the universe. So you got it now, huh? Yeah. I'm glad you are grateful, folks. Because being a grateful person is also very, very elegant. Yeah, very high class. Very um, worthy. Yes? If we are ungrateful, we are not very good. We don't have good quality in any case. So gratefulness is a very good quality. Which we, if we have it, it's very good for us. If not, we should also try to cultivate it. <laughs> yes. Because it's good for us. Feel good when you have. Yeah. When you are grateful. Yes, yes. Feel when good. you are not, you feel real bad. Yeah, you feel bad also. You feel like you're not worth it. Your conscience is bugging you. Yeah. Waking up and keep knocking in your heart. Hey, guy. <laughs> Be grateful. <laughs> now... The master don't care if you're grateful or not, yeah? Okay. Because if you're grateful or not, the master power is still working for you in any case. It just is better when you're grateful. Not because you're grateful and the master happy, but when you're grateful means you're high. You see? Your consciousness is high. I mean, you can see it, you can know it, you can feel it. Yeah, that's good. That is a progress in spiritual practice. Now, continue. Many of you... Though you are looking for a fuller life, would have no life at all if it were not for the efforts of the community of the friends. What is a community of the friends? I told you already. Practitioner, yes, the group, yeah? You are together, you help each other also. Hmm? Not only helping the world, but helping each other. Yes. Sometimes you have a little problem and you can't even talk to your family member. You go group meditation, you talk to each other, and that person has a good idea for you. And it solves your problem, give you a brighter direction. Yeah. That's why they say two heads are better than one. But it depends on what kind of head, of course. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a big head, then mm, rather without, no? <laughs> In that case, yeah? <laughs> non heads are better than two. Mm. Remember the joke I, I read to you also. The father was trying to explain to the child about his homework. And afterward, he lost his patience, he said. Do you understand, you idiot? You know, suppose your mother and I and you, how many is that idiot? How many? Idiot. He said, three idiots. <laughs> <laughs>
three idiots. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you know that joke already, no? On yeah. some TV. Yeah? Every time I hear joke, because I told you and I forgot what day, what joke. Because they have a collection and they just take one at a time. So I had to go and listen and I laugh again. <laughs> 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 Jokes are good for you. Jokes, poetry, music, I mean good one, yeah, good quality one. Even if a sad song, but good, good quality made also very soothing, yes. But even happy song and some lousy, you know, <laughs> you can't bear it. <laughs> you plug your ears. No? <laughs> All right, now we uh, continue. So, what he means is the community of the friends are very important. Eh? That's why I told you, go group meditation. That is the time you recharge yourself among friends. I mean, true friends. Friends who really would unconditionally help you if he can, yeah? And you just be there, you feel supported. You feel oneness. And the group, you know, like a unity of the same ideal, same uh, a noble goal, yes, and you feel good. Yeah, you understand each other, and you love each other. You feel affection among each other. That is the purpose of uh, group meditation, eh? Not to go there and looking for handsome boys and uh, uh, beautiful girls, okay, huh? The thing is, sometimes you think you fall in love, but it's not it. Yeah, so just take time, okay? Take it easy. <laughs> uh, check it out first, yeah? If it's uh, love or is it something else? Mostly it's something else. <laughs> the love at first sight don't always last. <laughs> First would be last. <laughs> it won't stay long, yeah? And sometimes uh, you feel the physical attraction, but it's not always compatible in all levels, yeah? So just uh, check it out, you know, maybe talking on that and find out what's what. Mostly it lasts a few weeks. <laughs> and uh, the fire dies down, you know, and then there will be other trouble. In Vietnam, you know, if you want to marry a girl, they make you stay in their house for three years. Mm -hmm. Very, very wise, you know? It's like dating nowadays, you know? Make sure what you want. The week before, we have a Vietnamese uh, Northern Opera, remember? The boy went and asked for the hands of the girl, and then they seemed like happy together, but then how can, how can such a love even broken? because of a suspicion, yeah? How can a husband be so stupid, yeah? If they're so happy together like that, how can he doubt her heart, you know? And not even asking her reason why, you see? And even maybe asking and don't even believe, yeah? Mm. I'm telling you, love in this world is not always that deep, is it? Yes? They're supposed to be, you know, live happily ever after they're happy together even, but still it doesn't amount to nothing. Just one little incident like that. He divorced her and the whole family blame her. So much for the love. Some we have to take time with romance, okay? <laughs> Sometimes after a few talks you feel like, uh oh, this is not it, you know. <laughs> so I still have time to back off. Yeah? But if you already go into deep and sign a contract and all that, oh, God helps you. <laughs> and one contract leads to another contract, <laughs> you know? And the house contract, and the car contract, a security contract, insurance contract, and then later baby's contract, you know? <laughs> Children contract and baby contract lasts, you know, 25 years, quarter of a lifetime at least, yeah? If you're lucky. If not, continue the whole life until you're old, and uh, maybe you went into the grave, then you finish your duty, otherwise continue. Sometimes they're married, they still come back, you got to babysit for them. <laughs> and if they have trouble, they divorce, then you have to take the girl back or the boy back, and together with a few more mouths to feed. Oh God, no end. Now we continue, yeah? Mm -hmm. See, many of you who are poor would be cursed if you were rich. 
Many of you who are still rich because of the presence of a man of wisdom. Many of you who have been at my school think that you have been taught by me. In actuality, you have been physically present in our assemblies while you were being taught in another assembly. Okay, you see, many things that we don't perceive. For example, some of his disciples have been poor, and then suddenly they became rich. For some miracle, something happened. And suppose if he has not been for the Master or the blessing of the Master, then that person would have been into trouble, cursed. Not always means uh, being cursed by people, but maybe some, some bad thing would have befallen them. And also some are still rich because of the man of wisdom, means the master, yes. So what he means is that the poor guy sometimes became rich overnight, but has no trouble with his new status, you know, no jealousy and no trouble with other neighbors or government because the richness came securely, yeah, and safely into his hand. You know, in old time it's different than now even. You, you cannot be rich overnight, you know. <laughs> and then some are still rich because of the man of wisdom. I guess what he meant is that if you have been rich and if it has not been for the, the blessing of the Master, probably you would have lost all your property and your, uh, you know, earning. If the Master has not advised you wisely or if Mm, the Master has not um, made you walk the way of righteousness. Therefore, you protect your property and continue being rich. Or if the Master has not been there and protect you, you would have lost it to thieves or any other mishap. Yeah, okay? What he means is he lists all kinds of situations which people do not understand that they have been blessed. Yes, because they think, how come Master don't make any miracle for me to see. Yes. It's not always obvious the miracles that the Master perform. Yeah. Not like stop the car, Master, or find the parking place and things like that. <laughs> and also even he said that many of you who have been in my school, and then you thought you've been taught by me, but actually you've been taught somewhere else. What does that mean? The higher teaching in the higher realms. When the, the Master teaches us in, beyond the physical, in the higher dimension. In modern life, you come to the Master to study with the Master, but uh, you still bring with you all the previous teaching from other Master. That's correct. That's correct. Most people come in to the present of the Master, but they don't try to listen well what the Master is saying, and they do not try to assimilate what the Master wants to deliver. They want to hold on to their opinion, uh, to their old uh, brainwashing system elsewhere, and still say that, I learn with the Master, and use the master name just to deliver his own opinion, or something else that he learned somewhere else, and say, Master, say that. And, you know, confusing, confusing the newcomer or confusing the fellow practitioner. It happened also. So we have to be careful about what we learn, what we digest, and what we offer to other people. So it's very seldom <laughs> that you truly understand. That's what he meant, okay? And he meant that it's seldom we truly devoted our attention to master teaching and assimilate it and practice it, yes. So it's, it's very difficult to control the mind, yeah? We have been brainwashed too long with too many systems, too many controlled way of thinking, set pattern of the society behavior and all that. So very difficult for us to change, yes. But we still can change. It takes time, but we will, yes. It's a habit we can replace it with another one. Okay. Next one. All these things are so foreign to you, to your customary thoughts, 
that you are not yet in a position to recognize them. My task has been to benefit you. The task of making that benefit perceptible to you is that of others. Anybody understand this? I believe that say that my task is to do it, mm -hmm. not to show you. Mm -hmm. Somebody else's task is to show you. Oh, I might explain it to you. Yeah, very good. Anybody else have different idea? Well, you accept his opinion then. Yeah, I think that's what it is, you see? Sometimes, is it true also, no? Sometimes the Master don't care whether you praise uh, him or not in this uh, letter. What he means, he just make you happy. Yeah? He just do what he can to help you. Understand or not, he don't care to explain it to you. But maybe other people will point it out to you and say, Look, if it's not for the Master, you see, she did that, she did that to me also, and that is how it happened, and the result is fantastic. So same in your case, for example. Or sometimes in the whole family, the non-initiate are the one who saw the Master doing a miracle <laughs> and tell the initiated <laughs> it happens. <laughs> and sometimes your friend outside there, you know, who already know of Master name, don't even know the photo or anything even, and say, oh, I saw that, uh, that person come and help you yesterday when she came. And then when he described it, you say, oh, that's my Master, how you know her? And he would say, I don't know, I just saw it. You didn't see it? No, I didn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. It happens. It happens, yes. You all know that very well, right? At least many of you know, huh? Or sometimes your child, four or five years old, and tell you, Master, Master, coming, Master, coming, Mom. Where? Where's the Master? There she's standing there smiling at you. Really? Really? Where? Where? <laughs> It happened, right? I heard that all the time, yes. Or sometimes the visitor came and then you're on and on about your master, yeah, how miraculous the master is and she can appear anywhere, anytime, you know, master is omnipresent and all that. And then your friend just fix in one corner and keep looking and you say, what are you looking at? I say, your master is here. <laughs> and the friend, pure-hearted, just saw it immediately. Sometimes a friend or acquaintance or children have a vision to tell you something because the mind is too hard. Yeah, so somebody else has to be a messenger. Yes, never mind, it's okay. It's fun also. By the way, for that person to also to believe Master as well, you know? So it's a one, one task, but two job done. All right. Because he says, these things are too foreign to your customary thought. Yes. So you don't know much about it, so you don't recognize them. Of course, in this world, everything done, we have to see it with our own eyes, you know? Then we know it's done, and that person do it. If you ask the electrician to come fix your light bulb, and it bright again, you say, oh yeah, he fixed it, yes? And if uh, your car broke down and the mechanic come and fix it, and your car run again, say, oh, the mechanic fix it. Then it's as obvious and has proof. But the master does many things, without proof, you see? And if you don't have your wisdom eye very wide open, difficult to recognize. Because it's not the same like the doing of this world, not all the time. If you ask the master to stop the car while it is sliding toward the pit, and it stopped right away, then maybe you understand it. Because it hasn't been able to stop before, and the brake doesn't work, and the ice is so slippery that you're going to fall into the pit if the car doesn't stop. And if you ask the master to stop and he stops, then you believe a little, yes? And after three, four times, then you believe a little more. <laughs> and then if many other things happen also in your life, then you begin to believe more in the master who takes care of you. But not everything as obvious as that, you see? The master even does many things without you asking. Yeah, change your life, you know, make you more comfortable and help you in many ways, but don't take account to it, and nobody see it, you see, and not even you see it. Yes, okay, so that's what he meant. It's good that I have chose this, you know, I haven't read the whole story. I just opened one, and I see now that I'm dead, I thought, oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, okay, <laughs> let's read it, you know. So I am also the first time reading it, just like you, the first one hearing it. And it turns out it's a very interesting story, yeah. 
you know, it's a story that we could identify with, right? Yeah, because we have similar experience, right? Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, the last stanza. <laughs> Translation too late, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember when we have bigger uh, meditation place, you know, like Taiwan or Korea or somewhere bigger, you know, and uh, there were laughter like waves, you know. <laughs> the English person laughed first, and then the Korean, and then the Chinese, then the Vietnamese, <laughs> and the Mexican, and the Spanish, whatever. Yeah. Because it depends on how fast the translation. translation. Yes, yes. <laughs> and they're just laughing one after another like this. <laughs> It's cute. Because some of the language are translation very long-winded sentences, you know? <laughs> like uh, in some language, one word is good enough. In other languages, maybe you have to use three, four, five words for that. Yeah. What is your language? Espanol. Espanol. Okay, okay. Uh, well, Espanol is already simple, yes. Some languages are very long. Yeah, for example, one, one time I was in Hungary, and whenever I go out, and if I need translation, I wait forever for one sentence, you know. I say, I say, so short, why it took so long to translate, you know? Not only the sentence, translation is long, the words are long also, you know. In, in English, uh, maybe... Some word only written one syllable or two syllables. And in the same word in Hungary, it written like ten syllables, you know? The whole word is long also. Yes, all the things. <laughs> And re remember the joke we had before? Japanese translation? Yeah. There were foreigners who speaking something. And then the, there is a translation, the guy tour. And, and then... After the guest spoke a lot, a lot, a lot, you know, the whole story, and other people laugh already. So, and the Japanese say to them, uh, the guest just told some jokes, so now please clap your hand and laugh. <laughs> Lost in translation. <laughs> Remember that film? It is truly like that sometimes. Remember in the film Lost in Translation, the guy talks a lot, a lot, a lot, and the translator just say. More intensity. Just look, more intensity. <laughs> okay, now we go to the last stanza. Your tragedy is that while waiting for me to secure miracles and make perceptible changes in you, you have invented miracles which I did not perform <laughs> and have developed a loyalty to me which is of no value at all. Anybody? Yes, for well, some disciple, they expect something from the master. And yes. So long, and they begin to see illusion, miracle, and then they uh, use that, and then uh, say that, oh, this is what master do. For mm. example, sometimes they say, in the master, tell me this. Mm. They invented it, and they say, in the master, or master, tell me that yes. you have to do this. Too. Yes, 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 it's yeah. true. Because yes. they want the master to do that, and yes. the master did not do it because it's not proper. But they desire to control others or to show that master uh, did that uh, to, to please his own ego. Yeah, and he told people, you know, I had a vision, you know, that you must do this. In the master told me you must do that, you must do this. And force others, you know, in confusion to do what he pleased, to please his ego, yeah. And also to uh, let people know that he is something. He has inner master connection, you know, which he did not, yes. Most often, the people who are in a lower level invent this kind of story, yes. And how about, uh, and have developed a loyalty to me, which is of no value at all? That is just a uh, Yeah? Just a... Uh, Like, for example, seeing Master and want to show that uh, I'm very faithful to Master, do all kind of things, but maybe that is not valuable because it's not helpful at all. Mm. Not true not devotion. Not true devotion. Yes, yes, yes. Just want to show people, yeah, that uh, he is very devoted, yes, so that he earn more respect and trust from other disciples, or even more followers even. 
No, that person, he must be one with the master because look at how he look at master. And, oh, he always try to sit in the front to see master and always run where master goes. The people who run in genuine devotion, that's different, yeah? But some people don't have that genuine devotion within themselves and they just do it. Or do even more than the real <laughs> devoted disciple, yeah? To catch attention, yes. To be better than more devoted than anybody else, so that everybody think, oh, he's really a real practitioner. He's a real devoted person. I can trust that guy because he loves the Master so much. That is hypocrite, correct? Why? Because he knows anybody who loves the Master loves the person also who loves the Master. Yes. Yes. So if you profess or you show like you love Master so much, then you endear yourself to other person who truly loves the master because she or he thinks he's the same. Oh, he also loves master so much, so I love him so much. He's a trustworthy person. He's truly a master disciple because the real devoted disciple is really devoted and loves master. So he respects and loves anybody who is like him or her because she's so innocent. He's really loved the master. And so benefit from it and from the love for the Master and feel good about it. So if he see another one same like him or her, he, he endear himself to her because he's so pure, he thinks that person is the same, you know? So devoted and so good. That is some hypocrite, yes. My God, the Master knows everything, he? Eh? Yeah, he knows everything. You know all that, huh? Yes. It's a pity, you know, that's why I have told you, if you go to a group meditation, it is because it's important to be in the company of like-minded saints. You have support, you have affection, you have true love, and you have true devotion to higher ideal together, you know? And if for that reason, we can work miracles, yes? We can even change the world, we can ask people to be vegetarian and all that, because we work together in a uniform. You see, united, strong, we would be strong. True devotion is very elevating, very soothing for both, for their master and for the disciples. But the fake devotion or the low, motiv lowly motivated devotion is very terrible, it's suffocating, it's very, very burdensome. Make sure your heart is pure and your devotion is genuine. You don't have to be devoted, but if you are, be genuine, okay? <laughs> And if you're not devoted, try to learn, okay? Try to learn to be more humble, more spiritually uh, motivated. It would be uh, better for you, and the benefit would be longer lasting. Yes? Okay? Hmm. Now we continue. Yes. And you have imagined changes and help and lessons which have not taken place. The changes... The help, the lessons, however, are there. Yes. Now find out what they really are. If you go on thinking and doing what I told you to do and what I told you to think, then you are working with yesterday's materials, which have already been used. What does that mean again, wise Buddha? <laughs> Uh, because if you follow a master and you think she tells you to do something, you begin to use your mind, you begin to compare, you are not 100% following it. Yeah. Yes. Because uh, once you use yesterday material, which means already digested from somebody else, not new now, when you are Listen to the master, it should be at the present and do things at the present. At that time, you are innocent. You learn directly. Mm. But if you already use this, whatever that just yesterday is useless. Mm. It's difficult mm -hmm. to explain this, I know. Yeah. You see, all this is fake, yes? Due to the person not diligently practice, yes, to connect with their own inner Supreme Master and just trying to follow theory. Yeah, and sometimes very tiresome, I'm telling you. Yes, truly. Because 
uh, the way you interpret what the Master said sometimes is all wrong, because you like to interpret that way. Could be maybe that the situation is very changed. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if a Master came and the it's Master okay. says something, yeah. People still do it many years ago, many mm. years to follow. Yes. The situation is very different. Different now also. So, and they keep in doing yeah, the yeah. way. Yes, like, yes, yes. Like, I remember <coughs> once you said that like, Mohammed said, Prophet hey, Mohammed, you yes. can have more than one wife. Yes. Because the situation uh, yes. was yes. that way. Yes. They, if we still doing that, the situation is different. Yes. You are Muslim, by the way? No? no? How you know all that? You do yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you look like a Muslim also. Yes. If you are Muslim, you understood this, na? When the prophet was alive, they were persecuted. You see, and many men, because in defense for their family and and children or brothers and sister in the shade, have perished. So many widows were left with many children without father. You see. So the prophet said, take them in under your protection. Love them just like you love your wife. So not necessarily that you take in the wife and the family and you treat her as a wife, but take in just like another wife, but maybe don't have any uh, physical relationship with her even, not necessarily like that. Or maybe you have, but it depends, you see? Not because you take her in just because she's pretty or because you lust after her and you need another wife. It's not like that. It's just because she's a widow and nobody takes care of her. And you know, in the Muslim society, most women don't work, right? Any Muslim here? Tell me if it's correct. No, they don't. Yes. So uh, the thing is, because uh, many widows are left after the man has lost his life to defend for you. In the time of Prophet Muhammad, it's different. You know how they have been persecuted. Many masters have been persecuted, life after life, like that, any country. So the prophet always have to run even, you know, everywhere, and hiding. And his disciples also, yes. Sometimes they cannot even cook in the daytime, they have to cook only at night and all that. Yes, it could be because at that time, during the festival, Ramadan means the birthday of Rama. Perhaps the prophet Muhammad has learned with Rama at that time, as a big master, Rama. And on his birthday, thousands of people gather, you know, to celebrate. And then, of course, in such a big gathering, they have to hide. They cannot openly cook in daytime and, uh, you know, go shopping and all that and, you know, spread everything out like this. So only eat at night. Yeah? Yes. At night is safer. Yes. And all day they can meditate or listen to discourses, you know, in quietness. But if they cook, the smoke comes out, you see? You cannot hide the smoke. Maybe you can hide people in caves and all that if you're quiet. But when you cook, thousands of people like that, when the Prophet was alive, maybe tens of thousands of people come to celebrate the birthday of the Grand Master. Rama was one of the Indian greatest masters. So when the Prophet was alive, many men lost their life sacrifice to protect the master, not that the master asked, but in the run, you see? They probably uh, have to stand behind to stop the enemy or something, and they perish. Or they just stand behind voluntarily, yes, to protect other brothers and sisters who run before them, yeah, and somebody stay behind. And that's how they lost their life, and mostly men stay out, you know, and uh, risk their life for the group. And for the master also, Prophet Muhammad never tell them to go out and fight anyone, never. But he said that if you die for the just cause to protect the true Dharma, then you go straight to heaven, that's correct. If you happen to die, he didn't mean you go out and die and then you go to heaven, or go out and even kill others and then you die and then you go to heaven. It's not like that. That's a quite misunderstanding of a real, gentle, loving, compassionate master. You see, just like uh, many uh, people who just cling to the past teaching of the Master, eh? yeah, 
just a one or two sentence. They don't even read the whole story or the whole Bible or the whole sutra even. It's just one or two sentences and keep arguing all the time. <laughs> uh, Jesus is fish, for example. The words can be translated differently. Of course, fish or condiments, you know, accompaniment with bread, you know, maybe even grapes or raisins, you know, grapes. <laughs> but uh, they insist as this fish and the other meaning don't care, you know. If the word have two meaning, at least you have to consider maybe fish, maybe not, you see? Maybe the accompaniment, you know, when you eat bread, you eat with something else. Dates or something like that in the desert. The Arabian people, you know, they eat bread with dates, you know? Maybe like that. The accompaniment, yeah? But no, it has to be fish. Even if the word means two. So you see, huh? You just interpret it. The word of the master or even the action of the master the way you want it, just to suit yourself. And use the name of Jesus, uh, Buddha, Mohammed, whatever, to oppress everybody else who don't listen to you. And that's how fanatism has been born. And then from that, holy war has been worked. Innocent people have died, suffer. And the bystander also suffer and the one who has been influenced by your misinterpretation also suffer and have to carry their bad karma with it. Yes. I learned so much from you just now because I came from a Muslim family. Yes. And for the longest time, I didn't know Ramadan was yeah. the birthday of Rama. Dan means birthday. And, and we have 40 days of fasting, yes. right? And we eat at night. And we eat nothing during the day, of all course. day long. I didn't know that. And I think the important thing that you just taught us is the misinterpretation, because I came from a family that didn't like Hinduism. Yeah. And so for them, they think Ramadan cannot be associated with a Hindu god, yeah. which they think Rama was. Right. So it's so true about the misinterpretation. Yes. All my life I thought that, until this moment. Oh, I'm now glad. I learn. Now I know it's not. I'm glad that I answered you, your question. Annoyingly. <laughs> I'm just telling this Muslim, you know. <laughs> he looked like a Muslim, you know. Yeah, that guy there, yeah. So I just tell him, you know. And luckily, by the way, you understood. It is possible that Prophet Muhammad learned with Rama, the master, you see, at that time. Because many masters went to India and learned from there. I also went to India to take the key. Jesus also went there during the missing 13-year gap in his life. Mm. Yes. Later they have proven it somewhere in the other book that he has gone to India and learned, okay? But never mind. If, even if you don't understand, it's okay too. Yes, yes, yes. It just know that I don't teach anything different from Prophet Muhammad, and I don't ever teach you anything extreme, or anything harmful to yourself or anybody, and that should be sufficient also. There is so much to explain from the past master, I would never be finished. It's just, by the way, now and again, if we have a chance and I tell you, many things we misunderstand because we were not there. Number one, number two, we are not his level. We don't understand what he's doing. You see, he listened to the sound, he go into the cave, and the angel Gabriel come to him, you know that, you know, he sit there and listen to the sound. Of course, he see vision and all that. Same Mary Master. You see, during the time of Prophet Muhammad, yeah, of course, he was such a humble master, ne? so he would just celebrate his master birthday. Since he learned in India, he would not stay in India, but he come home, maybe as his master behest, to go home and spread the teaching and teach his brothers and sister. you see? Or maybe he just went home because he went there and studied and he can't stay forever and he went home. Just like you come here, visit me and then you go home, yes? And then after you meditate for a long time, even though you have not seen the Master but you contact inside because of your purity, and then the Master come and tell you. But maybe he could not say that my Master come to tell me. Or maybe Master send the angel Gabriel is also correct, everything correct, yes? to tell him that, okay, it's time for you to go out now and don't sit in the cave forever. <laughs> you have to go out and help your brothers and sisters to become enlightened. It's okay, you have my permission, you see? And it's such a long distance between 
maybe Iran and India. He cannot just keep coming back and forth all the time. And if the master told him, spread the teaching in Iran, then that's where he would spread the teaching, despite all the danger surrounding him. Every time a master comes out, it's danger. No matter what age, it's something people feel like uh, strange, you know, because they always establish a religion, you see. When Prophet Muhammad was alive, they chased him everywhere. They persecuted his followers, who has done nothing wrong, but to worship in purity and learn righteousness, even as a human being. They never did nothing wrong. They persecuted them everywhere, yeah? And then they have to hide everywhere, you know, don't even have home and all that. And nowadays, big mosque everywhere. Millions of people come, look at the war. And when the prophet was alive, it's very difficult for them to even come to see him once a lifetime. That's why they say once a lifetime you must go to Mecca. Mecca is when the master established finally at that time. Maybe he has not been able to stay long later, he has to move to Medina and so on and so forth, and persecuted all the time. Even Bahain, you know, the master of Bahain also been persecuted and put in prison and all that, etc., etc. Not safe everywhere. If you want to gather in such a big gathering, uh, the master, of course, would not celebrate his birthday. In the Muslim tradition, you don't mention the prophet's birthday and celebrate his birthday. But Ramadan, yes. Why? Because when the master was alive, he was so humble. His master was probably still alive, you know? Or even after his master died, he still celebrated his master's birthday. That is a tradition in Hindu also. If a person come out, or the master just died and he become a successor, normally he would just say, always say, my master said that, my master said this, my master was great, just like Mia Laruba. You remember? Yeah, that is a tradition, the humility of the master, yeah? Or he would say, if the master is not there, or it's not convenient to mention the master, uh, or the master may be not as high as yourself, then you would probably say God or heaven or, you know, divine blessing, something like that. Rarely you mention it's yourself, but unless among disciples, and when the <laughs> disciple asks a direct question, Master, you stop my car and all that, then maybe you say, oh, well, we make fun out of it, you know? <laughs> but it's not like the Master always feel so proud and greatness within himself, or declaring it, not in such a, you know, pompous manner, <laughs> anything like that. Now you understand, yeah? So he celebrate Ramadan because that's his master. This is wonderful. Dan is the word in Hindu, in Sanskrit for birthday. Yeah. We have Buddha Dan also. And when it translated into Vietnamese, it become Dan. Dan Sang means the birthday of the Buddha. Buddha Dan. <laughs> Rama was a great master in Hindu tradition. He's not even Hindu. Of course, he's universal. Hmm? Can you imagine? It's such a great celebration. Of course, tens of thousands of people come to see him. And he doesn't have a room to house all that. So maybe they have to be somewhere, you know, in desert. Also difficult to hide, yeah? So they can't just uh, cook here, a stove, and there smoke, and there smoke, smoke everywhere, and then the government will know that there is a big gathering. You see, if, even if they are in the forest, there's no such jungle in Iran, <laughs> no thick forest, so even thin forest. So if you cook in nighttime, nobody see. Anything the master say, and you imagine the lessons that master did not even impart it to you, and you imagine changes and other stuff. You imagine it in your head, and you wanted it to happen, and you tell everybody else. And if you're strong will enough and your ego big enough, ambitious enough, you will have a bunch of followers, and then from that bunch of followers, they lead another ignorant bunch, and then that ignorant bunch collect another bunch just to make it big, and the, the more followers, the better, and they just want to enlarge themselves in ego, yes? But they want this glory. They see, oh, the Master is being worshipped by everybody and loved by the multitude. But they don't see the master power. They just see, oh, that's just a person sit there, you know. They talk and interpret the book. I can do that. Yeah, he seemed to even have more eloquence, you know, in a way. And of course, the ignorant people uh, listened to him and understood him. And they are, don't understand. Also, okay with them too. They don't care. How many people understand the real teaching of Jesus and Prophet Muhammad or Buddha or 
Mahavira, for example. How many? Many followers, but not many people understand. That's the thing. Yeah, when Buddha is even still alive, another one competes with him. He's a uh, cousin because he was jealous of his uh, fame, you know, and, and, and admiration from his followers, so he wants to do the same. And he has a big follower too. <laughs> yes, in any age, there's always somebody like that, yeah. These people not only don't practice, don't develop, also stop somebody else to come. Yeah, like they just go in there just to stir up trouble. And then later they don't practice and they just interpret something and they always say, oh, I already became Buddha. Master told me, if the Master told you that you will become Buddha, why do you stop others to come, for example? If you are the Buddha, then Master told you, then you must work with the Buddha, right? Work with the Master, not against Master. So you can see that. Yeah, but still some people listen. <laughs> you know? Because the same people don't, don't practice also. Just want to join in for Master Miracles. Yeah. Expecting this and that, and when it doesn't happen, they invented some. They say, the inner Master told me this, I have vision, this and that. This is all nonsense. Oh, what a pity, you know? Anyway, uh, sometimes the Master says something, and the people interpret it into something else and continue to do that. Yes? and don't follow the next step. Maybe he must say that to that person, and only that person truly understood, because it's just for him. And then everybody else tried to get some glimpse of it and interpret it in a different way, and it's, it's different. <laughs> That's why in one religion, so many branches even, they all think they are right. That is not correct. Even when the Master alive, his disciple only defends himself not to go out and provoke a war with other people, especially in the same family. Suppose they kill some of the enemies. That was the situation they had to. Nowadays, it's so free. You can belong to any order. Nobody say nothing. Why need to even fight with each other and kill each other, kill innocent people? Nobody go to heaven this way. I tell you, honestly, in the name of God, Nobody just go out, kill innocent people at random and go to heaven in the name of what? Don't care, the name of God or the name of devil. Nobody go to heaven this way. No prophet ever preached that. Have you ever seen that in the Quran? No. The prophet only said, okay, if you happen to die in the course you know, of protecting the true teaching or protecting your brother and sister, then you go straight to heaven, and that is correct. Just because it's happened, people persecute them, you know? And if he put his hand out to, to stop them and for the other to run quick, then he die. Then, in that case, he go to heaven, of course. But he's not to go out and try to kill the non-believer outside. No. They don't do that under the Prophet Muhammad's time. No, they don't do that. They just defend themselves. And in the course of defense, Maybe they die or maybe they unintentionally hurt the enemies by it. For example, if he, he put a rock to, to cover himself, huh? and then maybe the enemy still want to chase and kill him, and maybe he dropped the rock on the enemy and the enemy died. He did not have intention. Or maybe he just used some, some stick to defend himself, and then the enemy maybe fall onto the stick and die. That, that is not like his intent to kill him. The Muslim under the Prophet never went out to kill anybody, and the Prophet least of all tell them to do that. He never did. I have watched one of the Muslim uh, drama, yes, and it's supposed to be from history, you know? They made every time Ramadan, they made uh, the drama is similar all the time, yeah? And in that drama, one of the Master disciples, the Prophet disciples, said to the others, the Prophet told us not to kill anybody, not to make war. So we just don't do anything. You know, we just stay here and see how to stop them, that's it. Or just we don't go out and, and provoke and fight with them, because the Prophet say no. In the drama, I heard that. They replay, just like every Christmas, they replay the major drama. They play again and again every Christmas. So there must have been history, you see? Even nowadays they play that. They still say that Prophet did not tell us to go and fight. Yes. So we just keep quiet and try
try to avoid the enemies. That's what they say in a drama. I didn't have time to see the whole thing, but I see most of it. In this uh, trend of peace, you know, that the Prophet has taught them, even under extreme persecution like that. So even Jesus, you see, people harass him all the time, and he had so many disciples, he could have started a revolution, and people would listen to him with all the miracles that he did. Everyone would listen to him, and he could overcome the government, at least the local one, easily. He could even fight and run, you see, protect his life, but he didn't. See, all the masters are peaceful like that. So it's the same, you know. When you see that, you know, Master Jesus is a great man. And when you know that, you know, Mohammed is a great prophet. No master ever won his disciple to go out to kill even enemy. No. It said it all over in the Quran. <laughs> we collected them, you know, all the saints of the different prophets, and we put it on black and white there for everybody to see. I hope this helped to enlighten the people of different faith. That's why I told them to do it. It's worth it. Instead of using the airtime for advertisement and making money, we use the airtime just to benefit all faith, all the people, hoping that they make peace with each other. And it's working. You know, there was a king of Arabia, the king of Saudi Arabia. Yeah. He organized many times interfaith conference, remember? Oh, bless be his soul. He must be a very enlightened king and very kind person. And he helps many countries, many people. Not just his people, but other countries as well, yes. Blessed be his soul. <laughs> this is a true Muslim. This is the true spirit of Muslim. Peace and coordination. Yeah? Okay. All right. I have done my job. <laughs> now you're going to do yours. You know, you digest it. And you go home, you dissipate it to other people and make it your treasure, yeah? <laughs> it was a very good letter of the Master. Thanks be to him. Peace be upon him. Mirza Abdul Hadi Khan of Bokhara. Wow, very beautiful name, eh? I don't understand all of them, but it sounds very nice. Yeah, and the, where he is also very nice, Bokhara. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> The Arab language is very nice, huh? Yeah. yeah. The name of the city sounds very nice also. Like Kandahar, you know, it sounds so nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pity. It's all because of misunderstanding of religion. If the people truly study their religious scripture very well, there would be no war between religions, let alone within one religion. You see, it has to stop. Human has to have really enough one day of madness. But I tell you what, even so much war, the people die of hunger even more. The climate refugees is 25 million now, and the whole world refugees is 60-something million. One third of it is climate refugees which are not recognized. Other 40 million are recognized. Oh, some yes and some no, but at least they have a status of refugees, yeah? But the climate refugees, nobody care, and they live and die, nobody care. They have no right at all of any convention to protect them. You see, they are left alone to fight for themselves and for their children. These are the really true refugees and and I truly don't know where and how to help them. They're scattered everywhere, you know. They have no voice even, have no voice. Many islands, countries sunk, and then they have to go to the neighbor island, and the neighbor island also begins sinking. And they move again and again. You know, how can you live like that? How can you settle down like that? How can you earn any living for your family in this situation? That you have no home, no status, no nation, and nobody cares. No right. They're like uh, living on the edge of society, you know? They're the third kind of people, not even the war refugees. And that is just from last year alone. Eh? Yeah. I don't know how many more right now. And they predicted that uh, 
in 2010, just two more years or another year and a half or something, there will be 50 million, double of that right now. And that is just an estimate, you know. It could be more than that. I really have no more words to talk about this race, what we call human, you know. Some don't really live as a human. They live like in hell, suffering no end. I just really pray that one day everybody will change and live like a true human, you know, with compassion and love, which we have. All of humanity has love and compassion in them. They have it. They just choose not to recognize it, choose not to exercise it. So I just hope one day, you know, we all awaken and remember that, because that's the only life that's worth living, with love and compassion, yeah? Without love and compassion, what are we? Yeah? If we only love our own family and relatives, the animals also do the same. Why do we proclaim that we are better than animals and then we can't even eat them? Do you see what I mean? Because we are one, you know? We are one, even with strangers. That's why when I go outside, I don't feel anybody is stranger to me at all, ever. That's why I trust them, I love them just like I love you. Yeah, I never feel like, oh, this stranger, be aware of. I don't feel distant between me and them at all, ever. None of them, you know? No matter who. Maybe it's a homeless or a salesman or a clerk or, you know, bank teller, whatever. Yeah, I feel like they are just like you. Very trustworthy, very close, very intimate, very bloodline bonded, you know, together, like family. <laughs> oh. It's a very nice feeling, though. You feel at home, you know, like with everybody, yeah. Even if I don't speak the language, it's no matter to me. I immediately feel the link, you know. Yeah, if I see anybody, I feel they're my, my people. <laughs> yes. We can talk forever and uh, you meditate, okay? Okay. Lovely people. Thank I see you later. Thank you, Master. Master. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, Master. Thank you.